insane sushi chef fish cutting skills. Like beef or pork, there are many different cuts of fish. Some of these cuts go under different names or are specific to a certain species of fish. Because of this, it can be difficult to know which cuts of fish you should look for when eating in a restaurant or preparing a new seafood recipe at home. A fillet is the meat cut from the sides of the fish. There are three types of fillets, whole, V-cut, and J-cut, with the latter two being the most popular. With both cuts, the pin bone is removed. In a J-cut, the nape, a small, thin, fatty piece of meat on the lower side of the fillet, also is removed. Fillets from larger fish can be cut further into proportions. The parts of the fillet that are left over are called pieces or cutoffs, which are just as good as the loins, but slightly less uniform. Fillets are extremely versatile cuts that can be seasoned, marinated, baked, fried and sautéed, depending on the species, can be found skin on and skin off. The butterfly fillet, commonly used for small freshwater fish, a butterfly fillet is essentially two fillets attached by the skin that, when spread out, take on the shape of a butterfly. This cut is ideal for pan frying or baking, There are two types of loins, natural fillet loins from the small and medium sized fish and cut loins taken lengthwise across the backs of large fish like tuna, swordfish and shark. Whether natural or cut, loins are the prime cuts of thick and flavorful meats without the waste of skin or bones. Loins can be sold whole or cut into large pieces such as medallions and are great grilled, baked or sauteed. A steak is a crosswire cut made perpendicular to the spine. Generally made from larger fish, such as salmon, tuna, swordfish, and mahi-mahi. With a steak cut, the vertebrae, skin, and bones are left intact. A very popular cut for grilling, pan frying, broiling, or baking. The back end of the fish, closest to the tail, normally cut and sold bone in. Very flavorful and best seasoned and roasted. While whole fish may not be a cut, it is still a very popular way to prepare fish. Whole fish can be purchased either in the round, with the head, tail, and viscera still intact, or gutted which means the viscera has been removed but the head is still intact. Whole fish that have been gutted can be seasoned or stuffed and make for a striking presentation. Nutritionists, doctors, and other health experts all agree that seafood can form an integral part of any balanced diet. Fresh fish, in particular, is both delicious to eat and highly beneficial to our well-being. In addition to a broad range of essential vitamins and minerals, many fish also contain high levels of omega-3, polyunsaturated fatty acids, substances that boost the human metabolism, and that have been linked to a variety of positive health outcomes. Recreational anglers enjoy the unique opportunity of catching, preparing, and cooking their own fish, potentially saving money and also benefiting from access to much fresher seafood than is typically available from a market, fishmonger, or restaurant. Eating select fish you have caught yourself on a small scale recreationally is also arguably more sustainable than any other form of seafood consumption. 
However, to optimize this self-caught seafood experience and diminish the risk of food poisoning and other problems, it is essential that anglers know how to best handle their catch between water and plate. Never consume self-caught seafood unless you're absolutely sure of its identity. Certain species have deadly poisons in their internal organs, while others may carry location-specific threats, like toxins occasionally found in fish, known to have consumed dangerous microorganisms. If fishing new waters in tropical regions, always talk to local residents about the likelihood of encountering this problem, and discuss which species to avoid eating. Cutting through the area, known as the throat latch, under and between a fish gills, before bending the creature's head back sharply to break its spine and sever the spinal cord, not only kills the catch quickly, but also allows it to thoroughly bleed out. Bleeding can be an important step in optimizing the food value of many species, especially blood-rich fish, such as tuna and mackerel. However, while this method is certainly effective, especially with smaller fish, it can be extremely messy and rather unpleasant to perform. Once you've caught and killed your fish, it's time to gut and clean it. Use the back of a knife or scaling tool to remove scales underwater. Insert the knife into the vent and slice upwards towards the gills. Remove the entrails and gill assembly. Gouge out the kidney with a small spoon. Rinse the stomach cavity with water. Filleting a fish. Cut down into the backbone, just behind the fish's head. Then turn the knife and cut down towards the tail. Repeat on the other side. Using your knife, remove the rib cage from the fillet. To skin the fillet, place it skin side down, grip the tail firmly, and begin cutting at an angle from the tail forward. Or, if cutting into steaks, use a heavy duty standard or serrated knife to cut at a 90 degree angle. Once cleaned or butchered, fresh fish may be held in the refrigerator or on ice ideally covered in cling wrap or aluminum foil, for up to five or six days without significant deterioration. So long as their temperature is maintained at below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or five degrees Celsius, and any liquid is immediately drained away from the fish. For longer term storage, completely seal and then freeze the fish rapidly, while fresh and hold it at a temperature of no more than five degrees Fahrenheit or negative 15 degrees Celsius. Vacuum sealing fillets or portions in plastic sleeves before freezing prevents freezer burn and greatly extends their frozen shelf life. How long frozen fish will keep without significant deterioration very much depends upon the fat or oil content of the flesh. Leaner fish can be kept longer, but as a rule, all frozen fish should be thawed, promptly cooked, and eaten within three or four months of capture, and should never be refrozen after thawing. To prepare fish for sushi, make sure you select and store the fish properly. Get the fish from a trustworthy source. Pay attention to the condition of the seafood counter. Choose the fish. Store the fish. Cutting fish for sushi. Cut off the triangle tip. Slice a layer of fish. Remove the tendon from the fish. Scrape the fish off of the skin. Cut the fish for sashimi, nigiri, or sushi rolls. Observe as this master fish cutter properly cuts open a gigantic fish. It takes years and years of practice for someone to be this good at cutting up fish.
Just look at how well he is doing his job. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe.